for now let's let's focus on uh, on the on the gist of the of the session which is defining a moving average uh, function processor that will compute the average response time of our request whenever there's a success so what we'll do is we'll define an enriched success so average response time is going to be a task that we're going to be defining in a second it's going to take in the success stream and then a width with in um, in a an average in a kind of a sliding window uh, processor is how is the number of values we want to keep the number of most recent values we want to keep when we're computing uh, a particular aggregation of those of those values we're going to say that the width is five so we're going to be uh, considering only the last five uh, most recent values coming into the um, coming into the success uh, stream and then also we're going to be merging rather than merging success stream and failure stream we're going to be merging and reach success stream and failure stream so let's go and define what average response time looks like and then we're going to be defining a self.run function that takes in an input stream which is going to be a status stream or actually better a success stream I'm not going to put the time there uh, the type there you'll see why in a second and a width and the width is going to just be an, an integer for the time being all right so what are we going to be doing inside an average response time um, which is just an aggregation we do on a sliding window uh, of values so what we'll do and let me go back and before we forget add the task in so this is going to be abg response time and then we go back so what this is going to do is this is going to be uh, returning a channel of type checker success and a time span so what we're doing is we're returning a channel of tuples one of the elements is going to be the usual success object that we define record that we define in the status checker and then we're just going to pair that with the time span so what we can do is we can then create such a channel and tap on that and this is going to be called this is going to be our output stream and then we can do our usual spawn do and our usual loop do and hopefully at some point you'll get tired of this and you force me to refactor this into a nicer uh, a nicer shape but for the time being we just go like success stream dot perceive and we know that the type of this object is going to be what the type of this object is going to be a status checker success so we're going to be casting this value why am i doing this i'm doing this because otherwise success stream uh, at the moment could be either a success checker a status checker success or a failure so and this is because it comes from a partitioning function the partitioning function is able to uh, send values different directions based on a predicate but it doesn't do any sort of casting of uh, of the type and that's that's just fine uh, that's just the way we defined it so we read from the success stream we uh, then cast to success and then we call this a response or a status object and once we get the status object what we can do is uh, you can imagine that at the beginning of our uh, when, uh, uh, when when we start our fiber we define a deck object of capacity width and what we do with this and we call this most recent values and what we do with, the, with this most recent is whenever we receive a new status we do most recent dot shift which uh, pushes a value out of our of our deck from the from the very from the head of it and we're going to do it as, sh as a shift a question mark so that if the deck is empty as it will be at the beginning of our processing then nothing happens 
uh, the, the the deck stays empty. And then we'll, the other thing we'll do is we'll push a new value, which will go to the end of the to the end of the deck, and that value is going to be status dot response time. That's great. So now we have all the most recent values, the the with most recent values um, defined in most recent. And now what we do is we do a reduce operation, which you've probably seen many times in in Ruby, where we do uh, reduce with a with a sum, and this is going to compute the sum of all the values in the time span, and then we can just divide for by the width, and this is going to be our moving average uh, reading. And what we what do we do with the moving average? I'm just going to be calling it moving average uh, average. And then we can just send the moving average down to the output stream together with the status. So it's going to be status, comma, moving average. This is it, really. Let's just make sure we uh, take care of exceptions so we can rescue whenever there's a channel closure. Uh, closed error. And then we're probably going to be logging something. And then we know that we usually ensure that we actually close the downstream channel and downstream channel would be outstream dot close. Okay, so whenever an exception is thrown due to the receive as, uh, sorry, due to the uh, success stream receive, we're going to be popping over to rescue. And then at that point, we're just going to be uh, breaking out of the loop automatically and finally we close the downstream channel so that that closure can be propagated downstream okay so let's let's recap for a second we have a status which is which we get from the success stream we then shift the um, the oldest value out of the most recent um, array uh, deck and then we push the latest value then compute the new moving average and then pass that together with the status uh, down to downstream channel. Oh, also, and this is interesting, we define a DEC, which is a double-ended queue. So a data structure that makes it easy to um, and efficient to um, do operations at the two ends of, the, of an array. And with this uh, particular constructor, we have to be explicit about the type of elements we're pushing inside the deck. And in this case, it's gonna be span time span values. 